Hello, it's Thursday. Now, the sound didn't record for my intro, so I'm dubbing it over the best faces I pull during the recording. Also, today we'll be making a no-sew pterodactyl using the rib stitch for the wings. Now, this stitch is a bit of a pain, and I promise I'll do better next week. Okay, so let's talk tools and materials. For this pattern, you're going to need 8-ply 100% acrylic in 1 to 2 colours. I'm going to be using 2 today. I'm going to be using one colour for my main body, and I'm going to use another colour for my wings. So you're also going to need a pair of 15mm safety eyes, your 3.5mm hook, a pair of scissors, and because this is a no-sew pattern, you do not need your pins and needles. You will, however, need some stuffing, but that's it. Alright, let's get into it. So because he is a no-sew pattern, uh, we construct him a little bit differently than just breaking him down into pieces. We're going to start at the tip of his nose and we're going to work down to form the tip at the back of his head, leaving an opening sort of around the base where his neck would otherwise be. And then we start working in rounds and we work down. We form his luscious little booty and then we close off in a pair of little flippers. So that is the piece that we are going to start constructing first. And I should warn you that I am not going to include the stripes as part of this pattern. So he will look a bit more like this. That said, this is a pattern you can have a little fun with, so if you wanted to chuck some stripes in at the back of his head, you can go for it, feel free. All right, so grab your main body color and let's get started. Okay, so that's where we are at the end of row 14. So now what we're going to be doing is creating the opening where we'll be attaching the body later. So in order to do that, first up, we're just gonna do the three single crochet to move where we want our opening to be. Just like that. And now we are going to chain 18. Good, just like that. So there's our 18 chains. Then we're going to skip the next 12 stitches along the base of the head. And in that 13th stitch is where we'll put our next single crochet. So that opening is going to be worked into later to form out the body. So now we're just going to finish off round 15, which should take us back to the base of that chain. Just like that. So the next round, round 16, is 44 single crochet around, which might sound confusing given that we only did like 26 stitches in the last round. And that's because we're going to include our chain as the new stitches that we're working into. So we're doing 44 single crochet around and the first three are going to just fall in those first three single crochet nice and easy. So one, two, and three. And the next 18, we're going to be working into the chains along. Uh, so we're going to work into the chains on this. Just one loop of the chain is fine, leaving the second loop free. And we're going to work 18 stitches, one in each of those chains. So that is what those look like once they've been worked over the chains. And now we're going to finish off the, our 44 stitches around. And that is the end of that row. So now all we're going to be doing is continuing to work our rows around in a spiral, working up to the point at the back of the head. And then we will reattach our yarn afterwards to build out the body in this opening. So that's what we're gonna do now. And then we finish off and weave the end around to pull it tight and closed. So there is the head that we have so far. So what we're going to do next is we're going to position our eyes and then we're going to stuff the head. Okay, so the eyes go into row 10, counting backwards from the mat starting magic ring. So like so, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I just move my eyes back and forth a little bit to make sure that they are spaced the way I want them to be. So I've moved them both down there and check that you are happy with the positioning from all sides. I am, so I'm gonna snap the backs on. So next up, I'm gonna stuff this piece, making sure I'm getting all the way to the tip of the nose and all the way to the tip of the head point. So you can see I'm just using nature's poking implements, but feel free to use your hook or a pencil if you can't reach in that far. Okay, so we'll be able to come back and add some more stuffing later. So that's going to do for now. We just wanted to hold its shape. So I'm just gonna stop there. And the next thing we're gonna do is start building up the body around this opening. So we build it out like a little nugget off the back. 
So first up, I'm gonna just join my body color back to my hook using a slip knot fixer. So you'll see that when we're looking at this opening, we have a straight edge along the underside of the chin and then we have this sort of curve. So it should look like the letter D. Where we're gonna join is where the curved line meets the straight line. And we'll be working along the underside of this chin here first. So I'm gonna join in this corner here. And to do that, normally I would use a standing stitch, but today I am just going to slip stitch into that corner. So what I'm gonna do first is 10 front post single crochet along the underside of that chin. So front post, for those of you who need to know, when you insert your hook around the post from the front of the stitch, then back to the front of the stitch. So rather than working through the loops, which would be that way, I'm working around the post, which is that way. This will just help pull the body into the correct position. Now I'm gonna do 10 of those across the underside of this chin. Just like that. So you'll note that, that gives us this little ridge on the inside and it means that our body will head in this direction. Now we'll be working in the back loops of those chains that we did before and we'll just be working 24 single crochet around the curve of that D. Now you may have to really pack them in to get those 24 around because I've I always find that I lose a couple in these little corners where we transition from the chain loops to the front post. So the number 24 is actually really important. So if you have to, you can put an increase into each of those little cornering joints. Um, I haven't had to for this one here or any of the others that I've made, but it is one way to bring your stitch count up if you do need to. So there is our new round that we're gonna be working in. It should be 34 single crochet around. And now we are just going to build out our body. Okay, so we finished those rounds of 24 and that is actually the majority of our body done. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to stuff through the opening at the bottom and we're gonna stuff it quite firmly. <laughs> See what I mean about, about the booty, that pterodactyl booty though. <laughs> okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to close this opening off and in doing so create two very small little feet. So first up, we're gonna do nine single crochet just to move our starting point. just like that. And so rotating as though we were gonna keep working around. What we're going to do next is actually squeeze this opening shut. Now this opening is 24 stitches around, so we should have 12 matching pairs of stitches along this edge. So not unlike the way we did the T-Rex arms last week, if you watched that video. So now what I'm going to do is inserting my hook through the first pair of stitches. So that's the, the next one that I would normally work into anyway and the one that we last did. So that looks just like that. I'm going to work my first single crochet. Then I'm gonna do that in the next two pairs as well. So just single crochet in each. So there's our, our first little foot. Next up, I'm gonna slip stitch into the next six pairs. Just like that. And now we should have three pairs remaining and we're going to single crochet into each of them. And finish off. I'm just gonna tuck that remaining tail away. Just like that. There is your pterodactyl body and head. You can see there his little feet. So from here, we'll be working the wings. So as you can see here, we'll be doing the wings using a ribbing stitch. And we actually build that up using alternating layers of single crochet and slip stitch. Now, on this guy, I have put a little bit of wire in his wings so that I had extra poseability, but I did find on this one here that the wire wasn't necessary if I included enough decreases along the top of the wing. So that's the version that we're going to be doing today. Uh, but know that you can include wire if you want to be able to bend and fold the wings a little bit more specifically. Okay, so for the wings, we're going to be using, I'm gonna be using my second color, but you don't have to change to a different color if you don't want to. And we are going to do the left wing first. Now this matters because this, these ribs, they, we want them to be facing outwards. And if you do the, the wrong set of instructions, they'll end up facing downwards instead. 
So when I say we're gonna do the left wing, I mean, if I am looking directly at his pterodactyl butt, this is his left wing here on the left hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join my yarn in the side of this foot. So I'm just gonna insert my hook around that stitch on the side and join with a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna single crochet my way up the side of this pterodactyl. I should land it about here and we want 16 stitches up the side. So just inserting my hook around the stitches that are already there. I'm gonna work 16 up this side. just like that. Now it doesn't matter if it's a little bit higgledy-piggledy, so you'll see here mine kind of drifted up a little bit. On this one here I managed to get a bit of a straighter line, but it doesn't really matter. So now I'll be working lines backwards and forwards along these 16 stitches. So I'm going to start by chaining one and turning. So in general for this bit of the pattern we'll be working single crochet when we're working towards the feet and slip stitches when we're working towards the beak. So the next row is 14 single crochet and then a decrease. Just like that. Then I'm gonna chain one and turn. And I'm gonna work my way back up towards the beak, putting a slip stitch into each of those stitches. like that. Now I'm going to chain one and turn. And you know that the slip stitches has given us this little ridge along the top. So being careful to work into the slip stitch loops, not the single crochet loop. So the single crochet loops will be sitting on top, these first two. You're going to want to work into the slip stitch loops which will be sitting along the side of the wing. Let's see if I can get a closer shot than that. So we've got our single crochet loops along the top and then we'll have our slip stitch loops sitting along that underside. So we'll be working our single crochet back down towards the toe. So it'll be 13 stitches and then a decrease. And it doesn't matter if you can only get your hook through one of the loops of those slip stitches, it still gets the job done. Just be careful not to stitch into the single crochet loops. So I was a little disappointed that I did arrive at rib stitch for these wings. I was kind of hoping to do something a little bit more frilly or fancy, but uh, in the end, this was the only stitch that I could really get to work for me. Uh, but I'll be trying to explore and find something a little bit more interesting for next week, don't worry. So there we go, so that is our first ridge complete, and now we are just going to continue working down to a triangular point and finish off this wing. So I've finished off with that colour because I'm going to be using my main body colour to stitch along the edge. But if you're all, if you're just using all one colour, you can literally just turn from that finishing point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to join in that last row, again just with a little slip stitch. And I'm going to work my way back along the top, alternating between a single crochet and a decrease. Now the decreases are what's going to give it the structure it needs to hold itself out without any kind of wire. Now when I get back to the base of the body, I'm going to just slip stitch to finish off. And there's his little wing holding itself out as I said it would with the rib striping. So now we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So the only difference is when doing the right wing is that we're going to start at the shoulder and work our way down to the foot. 
our single crochets will be worked whenever we're working towards the beak and our slip stitches will be worked whenever we're working towards the toes. And there is your finished pterodactyl. So when you saw how many of these little guys that I had, my partner threw together this little mobile frame in about five seconds flat. So now they can fly, my pretties, fly. But yeah, that's it for this week's video. Okay, so that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. A written version of this pattern will be sent out to my patrons and will be available in my store. I'll link to both in the description down below. But other than that, like if you liked it, comment if you've got something to say, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.